put off by how long this video is, don't worry. I tend to jam-pack my videos with as much content, as many details as I possibly can, and I try to talk pretty fast. So while the video is a bit on the long side, I don't repeat myself, and I get into a lot of details about the subject that, you know, pretty much anything that I feel I can comment on and that I think you might find interesting. Thor The Dark World Movie Thoughts Now, I suppose I will start with the fight between good old Jesus Stick and Thor, and then Loki, of course. Jesus Stick seemed to really, you know, be doing well. He really got the upper hand, but then of course, right in the nick of time, just as he's supposed to completely decimate Thor, Triple A decides to go to the producers and really want to make changes about the direction of his character, and he's written out. I quite liked the whole thing of this, this twist that Loki seems to get killed off, but then turns up there at the end with the... I, I really think that there is a ton of, of possibilities with, with that setup, and I really hope that Marvel has a fantastic plan, because this is the first time where we end one of these movies with this very developed villain who's in a position of power. We've... I'm not gonna spoil the other movies, but this is not the first time that we have a cliffhanger, you know, set up for a future movie where it's, it's a, you know, it's a villain we've already seen or the like, but this is the first time that he's in a real position of power. And I'm thinking, build it up, build, maybe, maybe just, yeah, I, I should say what I'm thinking before I say how they should build it up. I would like to see Loki remain it, with, with this illusion, you know, remaining at, the, at, at Odin's seat of power and gradually increasing his power. He says in the movie, it is not my nature to be satisfied. He will want more. He will want more power, even if he is king of Asgard. He will want more power. I would like to build. I would like them to build it up. To, I understand Avengers Two is going to be Ultron. Build it to Avengers Three. Have him, and I always mix up the two names. Is it Dark Side or is it Thanos? I I forget which is. Marvel and which is DC, but I'm gonna go with Darkseid and hope I don't sound like a complete ass every time I mention the name Darkseid. Darkseid. Have him team up with Darkseid and by then he's amassed, like, maybe he's got five or six of the Nine Realms under his command because the King of Asgard keeps manipulating things to, in order to sort of get the you know, get military bases built in these places, you know. It's Loki. He can manipulate. We've seen him do it. Again, I'm not going to spoil the other movies, but we've seen Loki manipulate to get into situations where certain courses of action seem to make a lot of sense. So, I would like for them to build up to this by, over the course of the next couple of movies, just mentioning you know, oh, have you heard that Odin of Asgard has, you know, decided to move into, you know, Anaheim. To, to, he, he feels that they need to consolidate their forces in case this and this threat comes back or something, you know, and over the course of several movies, and suddenly we're up to maybe four or something, and then at the beginning of Avengers 3, you know, maybe Nick Fury comes in and says, we have word that Odin now has six worlds under his command. What is going on? There's something fishy about this, you know, and, okay, so 
Thor can't deal with this on its own, so bring back Avengers, you know, bring the Avengers together. We've got Darkseid, we've got Loki posing as Odin, which means that even, like, I mean, it's one thing that they, that the people of Asgard can't oppose their own king. It's another if they literally believe that they are fighting for Odin and not Loki, so they're not even going to want to betray. So, yeah massive and and you know I feel like that could really be huge. I, I really hope that Marvel realizes the the potential. I'm not even saying you don't have to use my idea. I'm not some kind of authority on this. I'm just saying there's tremendous possibility on this. Do not just use it as just a, a flimsy setup for one more movie. You've done great so far. Just, this is, this is a fantastic opportunity, build it, keep, keep the fire going, don't, don't rush into anything, build it, and then, then give it to us when you are good and ready, when you have really built it up to the, the right, I, I am really loving the way this whole thing is going with, with these movies, with the Marvelverse expanding. Now... Let's see, I wanted to say that, yes, about Loki, it just, I really love how they made him genu genuinely duplicitous in this. We've seen him manipulate before, but this is the first time where you really never knew where you had him. He's, he's very much... You, you never know exactly what he's going to say. I love the bit where he, you know, Alrim passes by him and it's like, you know, Alrim looks in, dude's got like a bowl of fruit, he's got wine, he's, he's dressed all snazzy, he's, looks like royalty. Alrim's like, I don't know who this guy is, I'm not letting someone like that out. This is, I, I just, I want random chaos, I just want them to come down here into the you know, into the prison and, and have to fight the, the guys so that I will have time to deal with, you know, some other stuff. This is not about, I'm not going to free just anyone. And Loki, you know, they, they, quick glance back and forth, and then Loki's like, be sure to use the stair on the left. And it's just like, wait, is he saying that in the hopes that I will now free him because he just helped me? Or is he saying that because he knows I won't help him and I should do the opposite? It's, it's, it's a fantastic, you know, and, and I, the way I understood it, and maybe this is obvious, but the way I understood it was Algram did use the stair on the left and it did indeed help. And then, you know, later it also, of course, turns out to be useful as setup. When I love that Loki also introduces himself as Loki of Jotunheim, not not of Asgard. You know, he's the, I, yeah, I'm one of the frost giants. It's just you know, I'm I'm embracing that now. So, but but you know, he didn't really know for sure that it was gonna end up in that situation. So you know. For, for all he knew, Thor wouldn't have gotten there in time, and, you know, they would have taken over completely, and he might have just gotten killed, or it at least wouldn't have been useful to him. So, yeah, it's... We, we don't know exactly why he helps Algrim, or if he's even necessarily trying to help. Maybe he is trying to freak him out and make him use the, the wrong stairwell or something. Although... Looking at Aldrin, I'm not sure he's the guy you really necessarily want to, you know, pose a riddle for. But, you know, then again, what's the worst he could do? You know, he'd have to free Loki to do anything, and Loki's got the, you know, Ill illusions. So, yeah, so, so getting back to Loki of Jotunheim. Fantastic that that was just an illusion because you, you really believe it. And there's at least one bit that's clearly there for like 
don't know, I guess other than audience benefit, it could also be to convince Jane, maybe they didn't think she would make a good enough liar, but you know, obviously Thor and Loki had planned it, but you know, he's like, I, all I wanted was to see you and Frigga and Odin's dead bodies, you know, it's just, you know, the, 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 the Dark Elves couldn't hear that, so, yeah, anyway. And he chops, like, the hand off of, you know, of Thor, and it's like, you know, you really think that, oh, no, it's all gone, and then it's just an illusion, it was to get them to lower their guard, and it makes so much more sense than just charging it. There's two, there's, there's just two of them, excuse me, sure, they're gods, but... They're still, you know, excuse me, they're, they're outnumbered and they're in enemy territory. And just, yeah, this whole thing where, you know, then, then once Loki gets stabbed, then he realizes, hey, I could go back and, you know, steal the throne. And you don't know where Odin is in, you know, when he really get it, you know, at, at, there at the end of the film where you realize that Loki was sitting on the throne pretending to be Odin. Now, the... that might actually be why he turned down getting the hammer back, because Loki probably isn't worthy of Meow Meow, as Darcy darlingly would put it. I love the bit where it's like, you know, Ian does the Superman move, picks up the car, and was, you know, because of the lessened gravity there, and Darcy's like, you saved my life. Yes, I, I did. And, you know, then cut to Jane and, and Eric, and then they do the thing, and the, the two of them teleport in, and they're like smooching, like, you know, at the end of a big romantic movie or something, and, and Jane's like, Darcy and and Darcy lets go of Ian. Jane, Ian, meow meow. <laughs> that was fantastic. That yeah, and and Mjolnir going back and forth because they kept going through those the portals. That's what I'm gonna go with. If you do not get that reference, it, welcome to the internet. Now the. the <laughs> Yeah, so, so, you know, taking away this precious hammer of his, making him more vulnerable, that, that was a really great idea and a logical way to do that as well, that it couldn't keep up with the different, you know, yeah, them going through the different portals and the whole thing, and the... And, and I also quite like that then, you know, he uses the portals to, you know, takes both of the arms of, you know, I take his arms away. Both of them. Sorry. I can only go so long without referencing Sin City. And then at the end, you know, he makes the, the rest of his body disappear back into, you know, you can't destroy the, 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 the ether. No, but I can destroy you, you know. And, Boom, with the, the hammer, and then at the very end, you know, the, the ship is falling on Thor, and, and Jane, like, lies there on it, you know. At first, I'm like, how is she gonna drag him away? And then, oh, okay, I guess she can't drag him away. Can she wake him? Nope, she can't wake him up. She's just gonna lie there, because we'll die together? And, you know, Eric messes with the controls, and the, the ship disappears in, and poetic justice, Malachi gets crushed by one of his own ships the way he sacrificed his own people inside the ships at the beginning of the film with, with Boar and crushed, you know, some, some Aesir. So, yeah, that was, that was quite good. One thing about the portals, how exactly were they doing the whole thing? They, they just had the, the, the thing, you know, just like a little flat monitor thing with some, some buttons on it. It looked like an Etch-a-Sketch. How exactly was that able to do these really complex things, moving these portals around in order to do all this stuff? I mean, they did some nifty stuff. They, they went into Jotunheim, grabbed one of the, the big beast from the first movie. Not a spoiler. 
it happens in the first 15, 30 minutes. And, you know, all of this stuff, I love that that reappeared there at the end and, and tried to get the, the, the birds there. That was, that was really good. It almost seems like a, a joke by the animators that got put into the film, like the animators, you know, were just messing around and, and then it, you know, they, they had to work with the birds for the, the teleporting birds thing and they had to work on the, the Jotunheim creature, so they just put the two together and then got put in the movie. But, yeah, it... I don't know, I, I kind of call BS on, on them being able to do all this advanced stuff with that tiny little computer thing with the portals. I really, really love all the humor in this surrounding these these big heavy subjects. You know, you have this the the, the god of thunder there and, and so he, he walks into the you know the apartment building or whatever and he hangs up the hammer nicely on, on the coat rack, you know, and has to take the train. How do I get to Greenwich? Uh, uh, take this train for three more stations. Okay, and he stands in there completely, just like a regular guy, but he's got the cape and the armor and the whole th Yeah, that was, that was really, really funny. And I'm not going to mention every single one of them because I'd be here all day. I love the cameos. The, the Stan Lee cameo and the Captain America cameo. The, the, with the Loki's voice out of Captain America's mouth and just the, oh, I, I want to have a conversation about truth and honor and patriotism. I was just... I, if, if the theater had not been packed, I would have been rolling around on the floor laughing my ass off. Amazing, just, yeah, and, and he makes Thor look like Sif, is it, you know, me killing you in this form isn't going to make it any easier on you to die at my hands, that, <laughs> yeah, the whole thing. I like the bit with, you know, this is very, very sneaky of you, Thor, I'm impressed, you know, and using the, the big alien jet, you know, the, the dark elf jet, to fly up, and then it's of course just a decoy, and Loki's almost saying, he's like, oh, great, brilliant plan, you're flying out in this, you know, big, obnoxious, loud, obvious ship, and then he gets thrown out, which, yeah, that's basically, that's what we would have done, and, you know, he grabs Jane and jumps out, and then, yeah, of course, so there's only the one ship left to, you know, because Farnbrill needs to get away as well, it, would have been pretty aw awkward if there hadn't been, you know, a ship for fun. I, I don't know, maybe they would have had him just jump into the sea and, you know, just tread water back to Asgard. Because Thor needs some alone time with Jane and, and Loki. You know, this movie could have taken a really dark turn at that point. If, especially considering that Jane was unconscious at the time. Now, the... Let's see, I... I quite like seeing Benicio Del Toro as the collector. I... For like half a second there, I was like, is that really what he's supposed to look like? And is Benicio Del Toro really... And, and then he starts moving and starts talking, and I'm just like, I'm sold. And I'm not even really... I don't tend to be that into this kind of sci-fi and, and big stuff, you know, so... But, but, yeah, it just... it worked. It was really... yeah. Now... But, but, yes, I quite like that we do spend a lot of the movie just with Thor, Loki, and you know, Jane, and for a lot of that time it's really just Thor and Loki because Jane is unconscious, and the two of them are talking, and they're talking about their relationship to their, you know, their parents were Thor's parents and Loki's adoptive parents, and this whole thing, and it just, it really works. It's that kind of dialogue that we really need between the two characters, and, 
Yeah, that's, that's fantastic. We had some great stuff like that in the first as well, and now because there's so much that's happened between these two characters, just to have them talk about that, it just following up on that is, is really gold, cinema gold, and, and dramatic gold. It's, it's the kind of thing where, I mean, in a few years, the, the action scenes might have been, you know, outdone by other movies, or, you know, the effects might not be as impressive, but these kinds of scenes, you know, two brothers, one of them adopted, talking about having lost one of their parents, and feeling like maybe it's the other one's fault, and this whole thing, that, that is just, that is... Yeah, the, the, it's, it's, these are universal human, you know, themes, and just, yeah, and, and the, the decision to kill Frigg Ulf was also, I did not see it coming. I, I mean, like, when, when he said, I believe you, and then she gets stabbed, I mean, just, for like half a second, I'm like, yeah, and then take her to the hearing and say, oh, wait, no, this is serious. I can tell by the way the movie is treated. This is serious, they're killing off Frigga. And it's this sort of thing where the fact that she died protecting Jane, she gave her life to save the universe. The fact that, and she kicked ass before that, she took out a couple, you know, with the sword, she, yeah, she left a scar on dude's face, you know, Ma Malachi, he, he's gonna remember her, she messed his face up, you know, PG-13 style, not Django Unchained style, not Quentin Tarantino style, but, and, and, after that, we go into how these characters, you know, how did her sons, how do her sons react to that? That, you know, that's... When, when you kill off a character, you have to follow up on it. You have to, it has to mean something. You can't just kill them off if, if it's an actual character, because it's, it's easy to kill off a character. It might, you know, it might lead to a lot of backlash, but basically killing off a character isn't that it's it's uncomplicated and it can make for an easy way to you know either clear out some dead wood and make way for some newcomers or just you know cheap sympathy but here it's actually it it means something it's and and yeah i felt they they did a really good job on it and it again fits with this you know it's it's serious these these they're, they're not going to stop, and it's not going to, it's, it's going to hurt, no matter what. It's, it's, it's not going to end well, you might say. Excuse me. Now, I think that might, more or less, I, I should maybe quickly say, just pretty much all the comedy involving Darcy and Eric was, was hilarious. I just, the, the, the introduction of Darcy that, you know, she just walks up and just stands there for a couple of seconds and, and like the day, Richard I think was just, poor guy, poor guy calls up and says, you know, just stay on the phone. Oh, oh, sure, I'll st we could have dinner. Oh, yeah, yeah. Poor guy. It's not easy living up to the Thunder God. Again, I would know. Anyway, yeah, Richard, it's like, up to, we'd, we'd like some wine, please. And she's like, oh, yeah, sure. I'll, it sounds good to me. Richard, this is Darcy. And she just drags, noisily drags over a chair and gets the, you know, bread, starts, 
you know, and, and starts eating and talking with, with her mouth full of this whole thing. And she just says, yeah, yeah, just, just look at this, I just think it might be interesting. Okay, okay, I'll go, I'll go. And, and you know, Jane is like, oh, okay, it's, it's okay. Yes, see bass, see bass, see bass, see bass, see bass. And he's just like, go be with your friend. <laughs> and and she, Darcy's just like sitting there, eating in the car, just waiting for Jane to show up, you know, and yeah. And the bit where they want to, th where Darcy keeps wanting to throw shoes, and not her own, you know, Jane, give me a shoe, I want to throw it down. Ian, give me a shoe, you know, intern, rather, give me a shoe. And the, you know, and, and they keep throwing things, and then suddenly it's like keys, and, and Ian looks down, and then, oh, it didn't come back. And Darcy's like, were those the car keys? <laughs> that's, that's funny. That's really funny. And the, but, but yeah, everything with Eric. It shouldn't be funny, I know, I know, it's just, it's a naked guy, and it's a guy not wearing pants. Why is it funny? I don't know. Is it funny? Yes. It's really funny. To me, anyway. It's, it's hilarious. The, you know, why are you not wearing pants? He says he thinks better, like this. And the, and the hug, and the, you know, we have to go, and Thor makes his hammer fly over into his hand. And then Selvig's like, I better put on some pants. Just crack everybody up in the theater. Now, I guess that might... I gotta say, I really enjoyed the, the heist planning sequence where, you know, it's that classical thing of the, the, the editing going back and forth between the table where they're discussing what's supposed to happen and we're seeing what is happening. And it's just, I had never thought I would see that in a Thor film. And it's just, it's again how the film just goes for some fun and out there stuff that it just, it's again, it's, it's, it's an element that's very grounded in reality. It's, we've seen it tons of, tons of times before. And, yeah, see, seeing it in this situation is just, it, it helps ground it in, in a way, and, yeah, it's, it was a lot of fun. And, and Heimdall was great, and, you know, he takes down the, the one ship, and, you know, he delays Odin from discovering, you know, I am obligated to report high treason. By whom? By me. Uh, you know, the, yeah, that was great. And, you know, and of course, it's not Thor who breaks out Jane, it's Sif, because they wouldn't think that she would be coming for Jane, so that whole thing, yeah. And you know, when they come back, Darcy's like, were you at a party? <laughs> yeah, the... The cell phone... It's just, you know, they're, they're in, the, in the cave and it's like, you know, and now we're, we're trapped here. And then the, the, the tune kicks in. With, it's like... It's so uncharacteristic for her. And, and we, you know, we know from before, when, when Darcy called her, because she didn't want to shout. And it was like, you know, this is the, you know, how do, how do I change the, the, the ringtone on my cell phone? You're a, you're a physicist and you can't change the ringtone on your cell phone. And, you know, then the, the second time they came and it's like, what is that? And, and Thor's like, it's not me. <laughs> And it was like, how, how does this have reception? And, you know, for, for just a second there, you think it's going to be a plug for some... You know, I mean, I, I try not to notice, but the, the product placement in this at times could get pretty bad. I mean, they made sure you knew what brand of cereal they were eating there at the end. You know, at first, it's sitting there on the table and sitting facing the camera so you can clearly read the name. And then Ian's got it in his hand, but he's holding it so that the name is clearly visible on the side. And it's just, yeah. But anyway, it, 
And then they find the, you know, the, the can that she threw earlier. And Thor's like, why are there so many shoes here? Yeah, that was, that was funny. And, and the rain, of course, with, you know, it just exactly a circle around Jane and Darcy. And Jane walks over to Thor and, it, you know, that's a note to, to any single guy trying to, you know, really get in with a girl. Obtain power over the natural elements. Make it rain everywhere but on her. That's how you make an entrance. You know, and, and she walks away and then Darcy's still standing there and then it rains on her. It's, uh, typical. Please rate and comment, and hey, if you like this video, that subscribe button's just waiting for you to click it.